Victorian authorities have faced a grilling over their handling of the coronavirus pandemic today, as we've covered already, particularly the management of the hotel quarantine program, which triggered a new wave of cases in the state. Today, Health Minister Jenny McCarkas, Chief Health Officer Brett Sutton and Premier Daniel Andrews, among other government officers, gave evidence at what's called the Public Accounts and Estimates Committee. This is different to the inquiry that's been set up. Deputy Chair and Liberal Member for Polworth, Richard Reardon, was one of the inquisitors. Richard Reardon, thank you very much for your time. Good evening, Chris. Thank you for the invite. Did you feel like you were head-butting a wall to no um, good use? Because I tell you what, he was very good at uh, refusing to answer the question. Uh, this guy, at times, Daniel Andrews, uh, he really could have been a dyke in, in the Netherlands. When it comes to holding back the pressure, when it comes to holding back the water, he is first rate. And me and my colleagues and the rest of Victoria have for weeks now seen Daniel Andrews face up to these questions and continually and totally deny any knowledge, any understanding of what went wrong. And absolutely no one believes it anymore. I mean, how can you? How can the Premier of the State of Victoria, when he's in charge, oversee what has simply become the most catastrophic failure in government policy? How can he oversee that and not ask one question? This is, the, this is what everyone in Victoria wants to know. Have you not, Daniel Andrews, sat down? There's only eight ministers in his crisis cabinet. Has he not sat with any of them and said, what the heck's happened? Because I can tell you, the people in my electorate, the people in Melbourne, the hundreds of thousands of people who are not at work, the thousands of small business people that are at home wondering if they're going to have a business by Christmas, those people are asking the question and they cannot understand why Daniel Andrews does not know the answers. See, he was evasive, obviously, about what was said in that special cabinet meeting about who was in charge and who takes responsibility. You can't deny that you don't know that. Secondly, he was equally as evasive about whether heads would roll. He knows it was a failure. How could he not answer that straight in a straightforward manner? I have no idea. I mean, could you imagine anybody running a business? Can you imagine anybody looking after an organisation that is overseeing its cataclysmic failure? I mean... We're in Victoria. We have curfews from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. We have businesses that can't open. We have people that can't leave their homes for one hour a day, only within five kilometres of their home. This is, these are conditions no one in a lifetime, in a generation, in, since the settlement of Victoria in 1834, mm. no one has experienced these conditions. And yet he has not asked one question of his administration as to how we ended up here. It's negligent, Chris. Yep, it's yep. absolutely negligent. Yeah, set and forget. And I don't think Brett Sutton, the CHO, should be let off the hook either. He said he wasn't involved in the hotel quarantine program. Fair enough. But if he is the chief health officer of the state, should he not have insisted that some of his people were in charge, like occurred in the other states and territories? They could have just followed the leader. Well, Chris, I tried to get this out of him today. He's a guy that only a few months ago told us we couldn't play golf because we'd kill people. We couldn't visit our mothers on Mother's Day because we'd kill them. And suddenly, uh, the known cause of coronavirus are returning travellers back into Victoria. That The single biggest cause in the first wave, it was 85% of cases from return travellers. And he had no interest in it. He didn't want to know how it worked. He didn't want to know it was safe. And more interestingly, that's turned up late this afternoon, is the role that the Victorian government, and presumably perhaps the Chief Health Officer, in knocking back the ADF support. Yes. We now know, we now know the Australian Defence Force offered to look after this, as they have done and assisted in other states. But no, not here in Victoria. We saw that video today, Chris. Um, we, we created a global investment return uh, party system, is what we did here in Victoria. I mean, we, we looked at uh, the way we could make people feel comfortable and then let them back into the community without even testing them. Yeah. Now, where was... Where was the Department of Health, where was the Health Minister on a policy that let the most contagious people into the community without a test? Yeah, it was a dangerous 
and eventually fatal program, but at least they got their ethnic diversity right. That, that video was just a classic. And you're right about Linda Reynolds. The uh, ADF, the Defence Minister, has confirmed this afternoon that they offered the ADF support many, many times as they did and were accepted in other states. One quick one. The committee has waited in favour of Labor. That's, of course... Um, uh, you know, uh, a roll-on from what the uh, configuration is in the parliament at the moment. Did that get in the way of what you wanted to ask today? Well, Chris, I'm not allowed to tell you what the deliberations are of the committee, right. but I think Victorians can draw a conclusion. We've seen a Premier refuse to answer questions and be held accountable now for a good couple of months on this particular issue. So uh, when the uh, government controls the numbers on what we talk about, I can only let you draw conclusions as to what, what the uh, role of the committee might be. But it is a powerful tool in terms of exposing because this government has not had any parliamentary scrutiny for months. Today was our first opportunity and we've got more to come. All so right. uh, we will learn more about what's gone on. We, we can read between the lines with what you've said. Richard Reardon, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chris.